Greetings and welcome to the channel. This is Michaela from Team Retrogue, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. So I was working on a review video for the One X Fly and a random tutorial video popped out. And the reason this happened is because I was kind of getting frustrated with the Steam UI front end and I wanted something a little bit different for this specific Windows handheld, and I ended up settling on a program called Playnight. Now keep in mind, this program is not just limited to the One X Fly. This will work on pretty much any Windows handheld that you have, and it will even work on a Windows desktop. It's a Windows program. And while it does require quite a bit of setup, it is feature rich and it has a lot of different plugin support. So you can run this front end and pretty much access any emulator or PC game configuration that you already have set up on your desktop. And so this walkthrough is going to help you set up Play Night on your own Windows setup and get you from zero to hero and get you playing some games with a great unified front end. So let's dive in and let's get to work. Okay, to start off with, I am actually using my One X Fly in docked mode with a wireless mouse and keyboard, and I suggest that you do the same. This will make this process a lot easier. Now, my footage of actually downloading and installing Play Night was lost to the ether, but it's a fairly simple process, and I will leave the link to the program in the video description. And the program kind of walks you through everything. It imports your Steam library or your Xbox and Battle.net libraries, and it will leave you with a screen looking like this. And so there is a section up in the Play Night menu up here by the orange controller called Add-ons. And that's going to be how we're going to configure the majority of our Play Night setup. Now in this add-on section, there's an area at the bottom called browse and there's a whole bunch of different sections within there such as libraries and generic and metadata sources and we're going to be pulling from a few of those and as you could see when you go into a category there's a whole bunch of different options and so for this guide i'm going to assume that you're like me and you were already using emudeck and you just weren't happy with some of the options that Emudeck provided through the Steam interface. And so I was thrilled to find out that there actually is an Emudeck plugin that requires a lot less legwork if you already have that program set up. So I didn't manually set up my emulators because I already had them configured. However, a good friend of mine, Joey from Joey's Retro Handhelds, did manually set up his emulators because he made this video back when he was running Windows 11 on his Steam Deck, and there was no emu deck for Windows back then. And so the process he used to manually add his emulators to Play Night is going to be exactly the same as he did in his video. So if you need to manually set up your emulators, pause this video, head over to his, watch his, and then come on back. However, if you already have EmuDeck for Windows set up and ready to go, then we're just going to go ahead and install the EmuDeck plugin to get everything talking to each other. And so in this add-on tab, you're going to go ahead and select EmuDeck, and then you're going to click install on the right, and it's going to queue up the plugin for install. At that point, the program is going to say that the add-in is scheduled for installation, and then we can go ahead and click save, and then we're gonna restart Play Night. And then once Play Night restarts, it's going to prompt you to pick your installation folder to where EmuDeck is. Now, if you're a doof like me and you picked the wrong directory, 
you can actually go into the extension settings under add-ons and you can manually change that directory. What you're actually looking for is the directory where all your ROMs and your BIOS files are located, not where MUDEC is installed. That's the mistake that I made. And so once that add-on is installed and configured properly, we're going to go back to the main menu. We're going to go to update game library and we're going to go to update all. And this process is going to take quite a bit depending on how many games you have in your emulation folders. And so I have quite a bit because I set up a tiny best set selection here. And so it's going to take a little bit of time to actually go through and process all of those games. And you're going to see them quickly get added to the library as the parser runs through. So this is a good time to take a break, grab a coffee or your beverage of choice, maybe grab some Halloween candy that you may have kicking around and come on back in about five, 10 minutes or so when everything's all set and ready to go. And so you're gonna notice here that everything was imported, but everything is also a mess. Not everything was necessarily scraped properly. There's icons missing and nothing is organized. It's just a hodgepodge of all of your games. So now we need to take some time and we need to adjust that. So let's go back into the add-ons tab and we're going to download two different metadata sources. One is going to be Screen Scraper, and the other one is going to be Steam Grid DB. So let's go ahead and navigate to those two sources, and then we're going to go ahead and click Install on both. And then let's click Save, Restart Play Night, and then when we come back, we're going to need to configure these metadata sources as well. And so yet again, we're going to go into Add-ons, and we're going to go into extension settings. And then from there, we're going to go to metadata sources. And so you're going to need an account with both of these websites, ScreenScraper and SteamGrid.db, because we need to put in a ScreenScraper account and we need a SteamGrid.db API key. And the only way to get one is to create an account with SteamGrid.db. So once you have that information, go ahead and put it into both of these sources and click save. And once you have that information in, we can go ahead and now start scraping our emulated games and our ROM files. So now let's demonstrate this using Super Nintendo. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to create a filter by clicking this filter icon on the top. And then I'm going to go to platform and let's click Super Nintendo. And so now we need to go ahead and manually select all of these games, which to do that, just click the top one, hold the shift key, and then press down until all of the titles are blue. That means that they are selected. Now let's go into the menu, into library, and then download metadata. So go ahead and click selected games only, and then uncheck the only download missing metadata box. Now let's click next, and we're going to select Steam Grid DB and ScreenScraper.fr, and we're going to click apply to all. And then for the most part, you're going to leave everything the same, but I like to take the cover image, the icon and the background image and make those come from Steam Grid DB only. And then everything else, I leave it as ScreenScraper.fr. And then all you have to do is click download metadata and let it do its thing. And you'll notice as Play Night is populating the metadata, you're getting a nice poster image. You're getting a hero like you would on Steam. And most importantly, the process is populating icons next to each title. And all this is going to be especially important once we start getting into filters and full screen browsing. But before we get into that, let's take a minute and actually check our games because you're gonna notice like here with Game Boy Tetris, you're not going to have an exact match. So you might need to go back into the individual game, 
download the metadata from Steam Grid DB and actually have it match the title properly. And thankfully, this process is very easy. You just probably want to go through your games and just make sure that everything looks the way it should. Now, if you want to manually add a game, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go to add game, and I'm actually going to go to Microsoft Store application. Now, this is originally going to come up with a whole bunch of default Microsoft apps. We're not actually going to install any of those. What we're going to do is we're going to click scan folder and we're going to install a program that's not part of any store and that's 14 launcher. So what I did was I navigated to the folder that the application was in and then the application itself shows up on a list of executable files. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click add games and then I'm going to search for that game in the play night front end and you could see here it's already got some metadata scraped but i'm just going to go through and i'm going to download the metadata from steamgrid.db just to make sure that it looks exactly the way that i want it to but then once you're done yeah you have a serviceable shortcut to a pc application that may not be part of a store like steam or gog or whatever and you could still link to it in play night. So let's now wrap things up by setting up for full screen mode. And in order to do that, you're going to actually save your filters. If you look at the right of the screen, you'll see an edit icon and you'll see a save icon. So what you want to do is you want to create a filter by platform and then you want to make sure that you save the platform with the proper naming convention. So for the specific theme that I'm using, I looked at the naming convention on their GitHub and you could see that on the left of the screen. And that's ultimately how I chose to name my filters. Now, there's a specific reason you have to do that and that's because these themes utilize icons. And so in order for the icons to properly show up, you need to make sure that the filters are named appropriately. And I'll leave a link in the description to this GitHub page because most of the themes that I've encountered use the same naming convention. And so if we go back into the add-ons tab, we can now start to browse for themes. So you can browse for themes for the desktop version, which is the version of Planet that we're looking at now. But what we're really interested in are the themes for full screen play night. And so you can browse through and install the ones you want. And most of the themes will have screenshots of what that theme will look like on play night once it's installed. So if you click on those, it will generally take you to a zoomed in version of that screenshot. So you could see how the icons look and you can also see how the games are going to appear in full screen mode. And there are some great themes. Ultimately, the one that I settled on was an Xbox Series X-like theme. Out of all the themes that I went through, this one seemed to fit the art that I scraped the best because I went with steamgrid.db and so all of these posters are showing up as good as they could in this theme. We're just about done, but there are a couple of last minute settings you do want to make sure are turned on. So let's go into the general tab and our settings, and we just wanna make sure that Play Night launches in full screen mode, and we also want to launch Play Night when we start our computer. And what this is going to do is that when we turn on our handheld, it's just going to bring us right to the Play Night browser, and it's going to be in full screen mode and if your windows handheld supports it you're going to want to have some type of shortcut for alt f4 that is the key combination to close the open application that is present right on the front of your screen and so on the one x fly i set it to the m1 button on the left 
And that's simply to make sure that we can close applications without much issue. So now here we are in full screen mode on the One X Fly. And so we're just going to boot into a game just to make sure everything took. So let's go ahead and boot up Super Mario Advance 4 for the Game Boy Advance. And all we have to do is select the poster and then go into play and all of this will function with the attached controller. And as you could see, my Emudex scripts come up and it's automatically going to boot RetroArch and we are right here in our game. So it took us a little bit of time, but we were at zero and now we are at hero and we have a good front end for our Windows device. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Play Night a front end that you would consider using? Is it too hard to set up or is it intuitive? And does it have decent plugin support? Is this something that you might consider using in the future if you have a Windows handheld? And feel free to continue the conversation in the Steam Machine and the Retro Handhelds Discords where you could find me in between videos. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if this was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing. Thank you.